Hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk about Wireshark and some of the dangers involved in using the default settings and I wanted to bring it to your attention a few settings that uh, can impact your analysis especially where HTTP is concerned. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is your normal Wireshark trace file of an HTTP GET as you can see that's by the line that's highlighted and down here in the lower right corner you'll see that this is called the factory default now in your case you'll see just the word default for example here okay but if you've seen my other videos you know that my default is vastly different than what comes out of the box from Wireshark so to demonstrate that you have what's called the factory default and this is the your normal default that comes out of the box again my default is very different than the factory default that uh, Wireshark ships with. All right, so let's take a look. So this is a get response to a TIFF image. It could be a GIF image, doesn't matter. Um, and so I want to know how long did this get transfer take? Okay, so, and a quick way to do that is to type in a display filter that uh, just looks for HTTP request or HTTP response. Okay. So that happens to be a display filter go ahead and type that in hit apply and it's going through all the messages and we see that it's taken from the get to receive the HTTP 200 OK it took over 20 seconds 20.8 to be exact now you might be thinking to yourself hey I found the problem this web server is slow and it's way beyond slow because after the client 192.168.1.114 issued a GET request. It took over 20 seconds for the HTTP 1.1200 OK message to come back. And you might run to your web administrator or the SA and say, "Hey, your web server sucks." Okay. Now, here's the problem. There are a couple of things here that should immediately jump out at you. And again, you have to have some understanding of HTTP. But let's kind of work this through. So the first clue here that we see that something may not be uh, normal or something is not as it seems is the first message itself. Okay? You notice in the middle pane here in the, the, the details view that there is a something called reassembled TCP segment and it says in fact packet number 4 and packet number 5 uh, were reassembled and you see here it's 1686 bytes um, so you're thinking, wait a minute, I know Ethernet is MTU of 1500, MSS of 1460 or below, so why is it 1686? Well, notice also that when you add up number 4 and number 5, you end up with 1686 bytes. So that's our first clue. Clue number 2 is that, look at the packet difference. Here's my GET, here's my OK, and the packet number is 36,091. So there are 36,90,000 packets um, between my get and my response. We can explain that by saying, well, of course, while well, the server is really slow, it took over 20 seconds. So the server, I was doing something else um, and my packet count went up uh, greatly. Okay? In other words, maybe I was surfing something else in the background, doing an FTP download, um, etc. And my packet, as a result of that, my packet number went from 5 to 3600. That's great, except let's take a look at our conversations. Okay, under statistics conversations. Let me bring this into the screen. You'll see that, in fact, there's only one IP address conversation. Not only that, but there's only one socket at play here. Okay, so in this trace file, there's nothing else going on except for this HTTP GET request. You can see that here, TCP one conversation. So if that's the case, then why is there a difference between five to 36,000 uh, for the get and the response HTTP.OK to come back? And what is HTTP 1.1 OK? So essentially, the 200 OK message means you make a request to the server, and the server says, OK, here you go. And it starts streaming the data to you. So clearly, if, if it takes the server over 20 seconds to respond to your GET request, there's problems. Okay? But again, something doesn't quite seem right because we noticed again that there are bigger bytes at play than what Ethernet allows. 
there's references to multiple packets and in fact it's called to reassemble TCP segment so what is going on here well let's take a look I'm gonna clear this display filter okay. and um, well let's take a look at what's happening exactly now the default setting for Wireshark for TCP control is if let's take a look and go to protocol, protocol preference and you'll see that allow subdissector to reassemble TCP streams is checked what does that mean exactly well there are certain protocols that Wireshark understands and so what Wireshark is doing behind the scenes is putting these packets together to make logical sense okay. what does that mean exactly well keep that in mind okay as we take a look at my setting okay. we'll come back to that in a second so as you can see the columns are different uh, it's the very same trace file and now I'm using the default again this is not the the default that comes with Wireshark this is my own customized default view and notice that when I click on get I don't have the reassembled message that we saw earlier okay let me show that to you we don't have this reassembled TCP segments message in my profile setting okay so what's going on well let's go ahead and type in the same display filter show me all HTTP response or HTTP request I'm sorry or HTTP dot response hit enter and we wait for it to chunk through the file and it comes back with get the same you notice it's the same TIFF file and this time the HTTP OK message comes back within 105 seconds so what's going on in one trace file the exact same trace file it showed over 20 seconds for the OK to come back and in another trace uh, file with a different profile it says that it's only 105 milliseconds or so for the OK to come back so why the discrepancy the reason for this is because in my default view you notice that protocol preference allow subdissector is not checked okay in other words I'm not letting Wireshark okay, reassemble these packets that it understands to show me a logical view of what's going on okay. what is a logical view exactly let's talk about that and by the by the way in case you're curious this is the image the TIFF file that I downloaded from NASA and by the way let me just take a moment to say how cool is this picture right NASA engineers are able to send this probe across space loop it around the Sun for gravity sling land safely on Mars have it drive around Mars surface do some donut wheelies apparently climb up a mountain turn around and take a picture of its tracks so nothing to do with Wireshark but I think this is incredibly cool so kudos to NASA uh, and engineering in general okay so back to our regularly scheduled program so what does that mean exactly the what I mentioned earlier the Wireshark is doing something by reassembling the protocols that it understands and giving you a logical view when you download this image in Wireshark I'm sorry in your browser okay the NASA image that I just showed you the logical view or what's called an end user experience view it really has to do with when does that last byte of that picture that makes up the TIFF image come down to your desktop because as we all know let me bring up the browser when I click on this view it takes a while for this page to paint okay? so the difference in timing is this if you allow Wireshark to reassemble the TCP packets it's not going to give you the 200 OK message until we get to the very bottom of this page all right so until this la very last packet or this text comes down Wireshark will not say 200 OK however we know for a fact that as soon as you make the get request for this image the server is going to immediately respond with 200 OK message and that's the reason why we started off by saying hey there's a problem with this trace file because according to my analysis using the factory default there's over 200 I'm sorry 20 seconds of delay before the HTTP OK message came back but is that in fact what happened or is it the fact that we have TCP 
under protocol preference, we have allowed dissector to reassemble TCP stream checked. Let's check, shall we? So I'm going to click on this packet number five, click on clear, okay? And let's click on a few packets down. And lo and behold, packet number eight has HTTP 1.1, 200 OK message right here. So in fact, the server, how long did the server take to give us an HTTP 1.1, 200 OK message? Let's find out. Here's our get request. I'm going to hit Control T to set it as time reference. And again, if you've seen my previous video, you know how important setting time reference is. I'm going to hit Control T. This is my new epoch. This is my new start of time. And in fact, the 200 OK message that we saw, which is here, happened about 105 seconds from my time reference. So by the time the server received the get, within 105 seconds, it took 105 milliseconds, it sent us the 200 OK. And yet, Wireshark is insisting that it took over 20 seconds. Why? Because if you allow TC, oops, excuse me. If you allow TCP to reassemble the TCP streams, it's going to wait until it gets to the very bottom. This is the very last message. And in fact, you see here, it says HTTP 1.1200 OK, about 20 seconds into it. Okay? If I click on this packet, the one that has 200 OK, there's nothing in the data, as you can see here, that says 200 OK. okay? There is no text in here that says 200 OK like we saw earlier. So this is nothing more than Wireshark telling us, hey, this 200 OK is not really here, but I know that if you allow me to reassemble this dissector, okay, to reassemble these packets, it really, from a user's perspective, you don't see the entire web page, the entire document, entire picture, GIF file, whatever the case might be, until the very last byte comes down. And therefore, from an end user perspective, it really did take 20 seconds. And in fact, you can see here that there are over 23,000 TCP segments that Wireshark put together to form that TIFF file. Whereas if you use my setup, okay, this is my default, I don't want Wireshark to make these decisions on my behalf. Okay? If I want to see it, I'll set up a profile that allows dissectors to reassemble TCP. But in reality, I want to see what's happening on the wire as the packets are traversing. And you notice here that in this case, if I clear this out, that within 105 milliseconds, we got the 200 OK as seen by here. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, okay, we see the same packets here without the 200 OK message being shown here. So again, valuable lesson in understanding exactly what Wireshark is doing and what the ramifications are. The last thing you want to do is run to your SA and say, hey, your web server is taking 20 seconds to make respond to my GET request, and therefore something is wrong with your server, only to be told when the SA or the web administrator looks through his logs, hey, wait a minute, I sent my 200 OK within 105 milliseconds. Okay, so that's what we need to avoid. By the way, what we're discussing here today was covered in detail by Christian Landstrom and it was covered during Wireshark 2013, okay? And here's the URL for it, SharkFest Wireshark Agenda. And I believe it was for the Wednesday session, it sure was. And if you look at Christian Landstrom's, um, hopefully the, the PowerPoint, his presentation is online, um, but a lot of this was taken from Christian's excellent session. Okay. Unfortunately, we didn't get to record Christian's session, and I thought this was important enough to um, record and present it to you guys uh, because it's an important topic. In the past, I just brushed uh, past it by saying, hey, uncheck, uncheck the protocol preference for allow this uh, subdesector to reassemble TCP stream. Okay. I kind of went into it vaguely. Um, and I didn't take the time to explain what the ramifications are. And uh, Christian, of course, 
uh, during his session showed this example, one of downloading a GIF file. There are other protocols that HTTP, uh, excuse me, Wireshark reassembles, so you need to be careful about that. Okay? Not only does it impact the analysis, but when you're doing additional analysis in Wireshark for HTTP content, how much HTTP traffic is there, etc., the option to allow subdisector to reassemble comes into play as well. Okay? But I'm not going to go into that today. Uh, you can check out Christian's excellent session from SharkFest 2013 uh, because he's, he covered it thoroughly. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's session, and uh, I plan on doing more of these short hit-and-run type sessions. Again, any and all feedback, welcome, and thank you very much.